What do you call a sea breeze on an immense scale? The answer is a monsoon. Just as the daily heating of land in the summer can bring a sea breeze on coasts, with a reversal of wind direction from off the land as evening cooling sets in. A monsoon is a major wind system that is simply the result of the differential heating of land and sea. Monsoonal climates are characterised by a dramatic seasonal change in direction of the prevailing winds over a region, which brings a marked change in rainfall and leads to distinct and often predictable wet and dry seasons. In fact, the term monsoon comes from the Arabic word morsim, meaning season. Such seasonal variations occur because land surfaces heat up and cool down much more quickly than bodies of water. This leads to pressure differences, which influences wind flow. Usually the term monsoon is associated with heavy rain, but in the seasonally changing pattern there is also a dry phase in the winter months. 60% of the world's population live in regions affected by monsoonal climate, but probably the best known monsoon is the one that affects much of South Asia. The Indian summer monsoon, also referred to as the Asian summer monsoon or the southwest monsoon, is an interaction of meteorology and topography on the grandest of scales. There are a number of atmospheric changes that take place before the monsoon rains arrive. As the sun climbs higher over the northern hemisphere, the Eurasian continent starts to heat up. The subtropical jet stream, which moves from west to east over northern India, weakens and moves northwards settling in a new location far to the north of the Himalayas. A new jet forms over the southern half of the Indian Peninsula, the tropical or equatorial easterly jet. This jet plays an important role in the start of the southwest monsoon by strengthening the area of high pressure over the Indian Ocean. With sea temperatures reaching nearly 30 degrees, the air over the ocean is comparatively cooler so the density and pressure is higher than air over the nearby continent. As the huge landmass heats up during the summer months, temperatures can reach as high as 50 degrees. Warm air is less dense than cold air, so the hot air over the land rises, forming a huge area of low pressure. As air moves from areas of higher pressure towards areas of lower pressure, a persistent onshore flow develops. The low-level Somali jet off the East African coast gives the southwest monsoon an extra push. The arrival of the southwesterly winds over the west coast of India in May to early June is often sudden and is referred to as the burst of the monsoon. These winds push northwards, reaching northwest India by mid-July. The high ground of the Himalayas acts as a barrier, preventing the winds from progressing further. Instead, the air is forced to rise over the foothills. When air is forced to rise, it produces cloud and rain. The Meghalaya state of northeast India means land of the clouds and is the wettest region on Earth. Whilst the UK receives on average under a metre of rainfall a year, the village of Morzinrum receives annually almost 12 metres of rain. The monsoon accounts for 80% of the rainfall in India with 70% of the Indian population relying on the rains for agriculture, it is hugely important to the lives of the billions of people who live in Southeast Asia and the Indian subcontinent. A delay of a few days in the arrival of the monsoon can badly affect the economy, but too much rain can bring severe economic loss through damage to property and roads caused by flooding. The monsoon trough marks the area of the heaviest rain, this elongated area of low pressure extends east to west, roughly parallel to the Himalayan foothills. The monsoon trough periodically moves north and south of its mean position. This leads to fluctuations in the intensity of the rainfall, with some areas experiencing an abrupt cease in rain, known as a break, while other areas see an equally rapid increase in rainfall. Oscillations in global atmospheric and oceanic conditions can cause fluctuations in the intensity of monsoon rains on an annual scale, with some years being more active than others. One of these oscillations is El Niño, the warm phase of the El Niño Southern Oscillation. 
This can lead to a drier southwest monsoon than usual, with possible drought and famine. On the other hand, the colder La Nina phase can bring a wetter monsoon than usual, with possible severe flooding. From September, as the sun starts to move southwards and the continent cools, the density and pressure of the air over the land increases. As the land cools more quickly than the adjacent ocean, there is a reversal of the temperature and pressure gradient, and the summer monsoon begins to withdraw from northern India. This retreat is much more gradual than the abrupt changes experienced with the onset of the summer monsoon. It finally withdraws from southern India and Sri Lanka in December. Many of the features associated with the onset of the summer monsoon disappear. The tropical easterly jet rapidly vanishes as the cooling ground lessens the temperature gradient between the land and sea. The subtropical jet moves southwards and becomes re-established over northern India. The winter, or northeast monsoon, brings northeasterly winds from off the land, making this the dry phase of the monsoon. Other major monsoon systems of the world are the West African and Asia-Australian monsoons. These form using the same principle as the Indian monsoon, where seasonal land-sea temperature differences cause a reversal in wind direction and bring associated wet and dry seasons. Sometimes the term monsoon is used to refer to any wind that changes direction with the seasons. Using this definition, the European monsoon is another name for the resurgence of westerly winds from the Atlantic bringing wind and rain, more commonly known as the return of the westerlies. This occurs in June and July after a brief weakening in the prevailing westerly wind direction in the spring.